you formally identify this as the late William Simmons? Oh, yes. I'm William Simmons. Oh, hello. A solicitor was our Mr. Simmons. Got his picture in the paper when he died. Will he marry me, May? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'll marry you. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Thrace, but you have a visitor. Only me. This is my sister, May. May, that's terrific! If he can switch his affections as quickly as that once, he could do it again. Do you still hate me? Of course I don't hate you. Well, that was a long time ago. We can't go on living in the past. I'll stand there, woman. Get an ambulance! I'd crawl back on my hands and knees if that's what he wanted. Oh, hey! Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. All right. I'm oh, so sorry. Attractive women. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh. Careful. Sorry. All right. Mm -hmm. Lovely room. Isn't it? Only the best for my sister. I think over there. Look, is this the one father made at night school? Yes. I bought the dressing table as well, and Mum's old china cabinet. With all her ornaments? Well, I didn't have the heart to throw them away. Oh, well, of course not. I wasn't sure whether you wanted me to bring them. May, you must feel free to bring anything you want. This is your home now. It's just you have such beautiful and valuable things. Hmm. Being rich is a state of mind. William used to say that. William. He was the greatest acquirer I ever met. Who do you think bought those? You. William bought nearly everything you see in the house. He loved indulging himself. And you? Then he must have changed. People do. They say people become acquisitive when they have something missing in their lives. I'm sure no one could say that of William. Let's get the rest of the stuff out of the van. It's too back in half an hour. generous of him to help like that. He's a lovely man. I don't know what I would have done without him when William was so ill. Do you remember these? Oh, that was a long time ago. Lime Regis. <laughs> What's this? A present from Margate. I don't remember mother and father ever going to Margate. William and I bought it back. Summer before you came home from university. I'm so sorry. Don't be silly. No, I hurt you. It was a long time ago. 
I wonder if you can ever forgive me, May. I felt so guilty over the years. And then when I saw you at the church... June? We've both lost him. The important thing is that we have each other. I love your house. Here we are, Mrs. Simmons. <laughs> we, we bought the house to be near Mum and Dad. I offered to have them here permanently, you know. Really? They never said. We never really talked about you. No. No, of course not. Anyway, you know they preferred their own home. And well, they couldn't have stayed there without you. Maybe. Well, certainly not towards the end. I always felt I let them down. You sent them money. Oh, it's not the same as spending time. I always wondered what they were really thinking. They thought you were wonderful. When you got into Sussex, they thought it was a dream come true. And when William got that job in Malaya, all those postcards, it was so exotic. Something to show the neighbours. It wasn't me, though. It was William. You supported him. He was a successful man, and you ran his house. You entertained his guests. Yes. You were busy. Oh, yes. I was busy. Too busy to have children, even? Seems so, yes. I always thought you'd have a child. Me too. One of each? Yes, well, I didn't. you are. I'm sorry. There's just so much that I didn't know. If you wanted to know, you should have asked. I had to find out for myself. These are personal, May. I'm sorry. Prowling around in the middle of the night like an intruder, I could have shot you. Perhaps you should have. all these years. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you had a gun? It was William's father's. He was issued it during the war. I don't know what to say. It's all right. Just, just drink up. It's just preyed on my mind for all these years. What it was like for you to be married to him. What you did. And where you went. I understand me. And I want to help. But if there's anything you want to know, just ask. Thank you. But he is dead, May. He's dead and we're still alive. And it's us we should concentrate on now. I promise it won't happen again. Good night.
I'm not so sure about this. Nonsense. You'll enjoy yourself. But I don't know anybody. Well, you will by lunchtime. Oh, for goodness sake, it's only the village hall committee. They'll welcome you with open arms. I hope you're right. They're nice people. Maybe a little parochial, but they're good people, if you say so. I do say so. And you look lovely. Not true. It is true. Hello. I suppose you're off to the village hall committee. How did you know where we were going? Ah, oh, I know the movements of every resident in this village. So you'd better watch out, Miss Maythrace. So this is where you live? Yes. Now, how could you possibly know that? The piano. Oh. May's a very good pianist. Not true. Well, I'm useless. The cello is my real instrument. John's being uncharacteristically modest. Yes, that's true. But let me tell you my real news. The film? The film. Come along and help me celebrate on Saturday night. And bring a bottle. John, that's marvellous. That's wonderful. Well done. Thank you. I can see I'm going to have to do this more often. <laughs> a surprise to us when June told us she had a sister. So good of you to come along and support the village, just like your sister. Absolute workhorse. I don't know how we've managed these last six months without her. It's not been easy for her either. That goes without saying. Absolute tragedy. We were all so proud of Bill Simmons. Such a talent. You knew him quite well, I suppose. When I was younger, but I haven't seen either of them for some time. Oh, there. And Croydon, so near. Uh, May won't blow her own trumpet, Marjorie. But she's devoted the past 20 years to looking after mother and father almost single-handedly, as well as holding down a job. Oh, hands full. I understand. One very odd thing, though, as I was saying to Mrs. Meadows just now, you've lived apart for so long, and yet in very many ways you're so alike. Even down to your taste in clothes. And it's not only the taste in clothes we share, is it, June? In a funny sort of way, we've been after the same thing all our lives. He works hard. He does. I know I shouldn't say this, but he reminds me of William. William? Mm. I can't see that at all. Anyway, I want to get a new dress for the party. I've plenty. I know I want one of my own. Why not then? We could go up to London. Make a day of it. Would you like that? On one condition. I pay for it. Oh, please, May, there's no need. Yes, there is. You've done enough for me already. You've given me a home, an income. And an inheritance. What? An inheritance. I rang my solicitor this morning, telling him to draft a new will. I've made you my sole heir, May. From now on, if anything happens to me, you get the lot. <laughs> You're mad. <laughs> I mean, I've never been to such a good party in this village before. How are you, darling? Have you seen them since you came back from the States? Well, I called a couple of times, but they were always up in London. They seem to be spending quite a lot of time gadding about these days. Do I detect a slight hint of puritanism, Martin? <laughs> Not at all. June deserves all the fun she can get. I just worry about her overdoing things. June? She's got more energy than national power. I'd say William's death's taken more out of her than she'll admit. And taking her sister on like that. June, May, happy Christmas, both of you. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Let me take your coat. You look lovely. Thank you. Let me get you both a drink. I made some rather lethal punch. America. New York was fantastic. LA rather less so. Still, it was all very exciting. I was glad to be back. We didn't think you'd come back, all those glamorous actresses. Oh, I could tell you some stories. 
pretty. Are you all right, June? Slight headache. I'm sure a drink will cure it. Here, a couple of these, and you'll soon be well and truly anaesthetized. Hi, John. Hi. Is anything the matter? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I'm amazed at the change. Oh, yes. May's changed all right. <laughs> you wouldn't think she was the same person. No. Oh, don't tell me you've fallen under a spell like the rest of these dozy men in this village. She's very attractive. So is a hooded cobra. That's very uncharitable, aren't you? I'm sorry. I don't like her. For years, we didn't know she existed, and then suddenly she turns up, looking like a displaced person. And before you know where you are, she's got her feet under the table and living the life of Riley. Don't tell me you're jealous. <laughs> well, I, I suppose I am of truth for now. Not every woman over 40 can metamorphosize so successfully. Well, I'm glad you've not lost your sense of humor. I still don't think she's done June any favours. What? Well, coming to live at the old rectory, June looks worn out. I don't think she's ever William yet. Perhaps. Sometimes real grieving doesn't come out for quite some time. I think she's just starting the process now, and she'll need all the help we can give her. <laughs> you didn't write. I hadn't time. Liar. June. I swear. They get me locked in a room chained to a desk. I was going mad. I didn't think we should go down. I was worried. There was no need. You knew where I was. You knew what I was doing. I don't want to lose you. Don't be silly. Why should you lose me? Almost. Yes, it's thinning out now, thank God. June asked me to say goodbye for her. She gone? To me, Grain. It's not her first. Oh, yes, of course. Not a problem. It's still only three months since William died. Yes, yes, of course. You know, I, I really can't get over the change in you. Well, I'm a different person, thanks to her. Yes, yeah, she's a great girl. Yes. I'll never forget how wonderful she was when William was ill. Excuse me a minute, I'll just say goodbye to this lot. Hi, Colin. Good night, Thank you. Happy Christmas, all Well, I'd better be going too. I don't want to keep you up. Oh, please don't hurry. It's been some time since we met, and we've hardly had a chance to get to know one another. <laughs> Do you think now's the right time? I want to hear you play the piano. No. Oh, go on, please. <clears throat> no one left a mark. Apart from you. Oh, I wouldn't do that. What shall I play? Uh, whatever you like. What's this? Charming. When I was a girl, that was my favourite song. I think I'd like to have known you then. I wish you had. You're very nice. <gasps> June! <laughs> you made me 
jump. Party just finished? No, I stayed on. John played me uh, some of his film music. Was it good? Yes, it was. Has your migraine gone? No. Oh, would you like me to make you a cup of tea? No, thanks. He's nice, isn't he? He's a good friend. Attractive, young and very talented. I suppose so. I've never really thought about him that way. Oh, come on. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I know that um, you're very good friends. Yes, we are. And that's all we are. For goodness sake, May, William's not been dead three months. I'm aware of that. I was just trying to be light-hearted. A joke! Oh, sorry, please. If it's sick. Come on, I'm going to take you upstairs to bed and then I'm going to call the doctor. No, I bet I'll be fine. I'll call the doctor if I'm no better in the morning. I'm sure there's nothing physically wrong, Mrs. Simmons. If these don't work, then do get back to me. Thank you. Take it easy for a few days. No excitement. A few gentle walks, if the weather allows. I'll see she takes care of herself. Bring the surgery if you're worried. I will. How long has she been having these migraines? It's hard to say. A couple of months. And does it coincide with anything you can think of, Miss Trace? Not really. I put it down to delayed reaction over William's death. She's kept such a brave face on things. You may well be right. Still, keep a good eye on her and let me know if they get worse. Don't worry, I'll look after her. She's very precious to me. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. June's not very well. Nothing drastic. She can't seem to shift last night's migraine. Oh, dear. What did he say? Well, he's given her some pills and told her to rest. Did he give any reasons? He says it's possibly the bereavement. Delayed reaction. Mm. Is it all right if I go out and see her? Yes. Not too long, though. She's in the bedroom. I think you know where that is. I'll put the kettle on. to have you here. She'll be asleep soon. It's what she needs. She's had a difficult time. Yes. So the doctor thinks it's delayed reaction. Can you think of another reason? Seems logical. I know their marriage was a bit rocky sometimes, but it was June's raison d'etre. Rocky? They lived virtually apart for the last few years, didn't you know? No. She didn't say. I had no idea. William had a totally separate life in London. I knew that he worked there. More than that, he lived there. He just came here from time to time to keep up appearances. So he left June here while he led a riotous life in London? Hardly riotous. He worked mostly, sometimes he visited friends. So they grew apart? I suppose so. I didn't know. You won't tell June I told you. Of course not. Hey, 
Shopping. You're up. Yes, I've had a sleep. I'm feeling much better. What have you bought? Oh, just a few bits and pieces. I put them on your account. I hope you don't mind. You did say. No, oh, no, it's fine. Are you uh, planning on going somewhere? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. I thought it would do us both some good to get away for a fortnight. So, holiday. It's just what you need. Two weeks away to pamper yourself. No. The change would do you good. No, I can't go. Not now. I really don't feel up to it. Oh. John and I thought it'd be such a good idea. John? It was his suggestion. Did John go with you into town? Yes. He helped me choose those things. <clears throat> He's got great taste. Yes. You all right? Fine. Not that nasty migraine back again. No, it's, uh, it's just a twinge. I'm so glad you introduced me to John. He's such fun. I think I could really grow to like him. Do you? I didn't realise that you and William had been living separate lives for the past few years. What? Well, it's just something John said. What did John say? Well, that you'd been living virtually separate lives until his illness. It wasn't quite as simple as that. Oh, I must have misunderstood. William had his work. It was very important to him. It's not a criticism, June. We were very happy. I'm sure you were. We loved each other. Good. I think I'm going to go and have a bath. John's got a couple of tickets for the theatre tonight and asked me if I'd like to go. The theatre? Well, that's all right, isn't it? Well, I mean, you're looking so much better, but have you rather that I stay? No. No, of course not. You go. So, I was the elder sister, and June was the star. And didn't you mind that? Sometimes. But I got used to it. You never married? No. And you ended up looking after your parents? I didn't mind. You know, you're a rare person. I'm a very ordinary person. <laughs> there are thousands of women like me. I don't believe that. I'm afraid it's true. Never mind about me. <clears throat> How did you find this place? William and I used to come here when he was down. What's the matter? Nothing. There is. It's every time I mention William. I don't want to talk about it, all right? Yes? OK. It's not fair on June. Because she was married to William. Because he was engaged to me. William was engaged to you. Before he met June. You mustn't tell her that you know. But how? I worked in a children's home, and he was the legal aid solicitor. We fell in love and... and we got engaged. 
And then June came onto the scene and he broke the engagement off and married her. But why? She bowled him off his feet. Yes, but she knew you were engaged. It was a long time ago. So that's why you've never had any contact. <laughs> well, you can imagine how I felt. It's all very silly, and I'm glad it's resolved itself. And you bear no grudges? Well, I did. But not anymore. That's amazing. You play second fiddle to your sister all your life, lose the man you love, end up looking after your aging parents, and still you bear no malice. Life's too short to bear malice. I just wish I was 15 years younger. Well, you don't look a day over. <laughs> well, it's true. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm sorry about it. Don't be. I was very flattered. But that wasn't my intention. Look, I know you and June are more than just good friends. I helped her through a bad time. We got close. Maybe we were on the verge of something. I don't know. But that was before you came along. It's true. Don't be silly. Come back to the cottage. I don't know. All right. What do you think? Too young. Oh, I don't know. You must have bought at least three dresses since the party. I can't think why you need so many. You're very late again last night. Oh, did I disturb you? Yes, you did, as a matter of fact. And you forgot to lock up. There are valuable things in this house, mate. Personal things. I don't want them lost because of your carelessness. I'm sorry, I forgot. Well, please don't forget in the future. People are starting to talk, you know. What? People in the village are starting to gossip about you and John. I can't think why. Probably because you spend every waking hour with him. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Anyway, we have a lot in common. What's wrong with that? Depends. On what? You know what they say? No fool like an old fool. <coughs> you think I'm an old fool? I don't want to see you hurt. <sighs> uh, you are older than he is, May. Well, he doesn't seem to mind that. Where are you going? I'm going to see Dr. Kendry. Oh, is your migraine still bad? Yes. Well, stopping smoking might help. A bit of consideration about the house might, too. Your work. Well, I don't want to interrupt your work. Oh, don't be silly. Anyway, you know me. 
any excuse. Come on in. So, how are you? Oh, you know. Okay. Still getting the migraines. Oh, I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I've just been to the doctor's. He's referred me to a specialist. Nothing serious? Hope not. You poor thing. I've missed you. Yes, well, I've been rather busy. So May's been telling me. May? How busy you are. Still got time for her, though. We see each other, yes. I thought we were seeing each other. June, it was never like that. Well, you could have fooled me. Look, June, I don't want an argument. I've not seen you for weeks with no explanation and you don't want an argument. I don't have to account to you for my movements. We were lovers, for God's sake. Look, you were in a state I wanted to help. Oh. It was therapy, was it? Well, thank you very much. Please, June, don't be like that. Don't you see what she's doing to you? She's using you. No. Yes, she is. She's using you to get back at me. I don't think so. Well, you don't know the half. If you mean her engagement to William, I do. She told you? Yes. When? It doesn't matter when. She told me that's all there is to it. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, really, I'm sorry, John. I, I don't want us to argue like this. Fine. Neither do I. Let me stay. Not now, June. I have work to do. Then later. You could take me for a drink. Yes, all right. <laughs> Unless you're taking her, of course. All right. I'm going. Don't worry. I won't cling. say he's referring me to the specialist does he think it's serious he doesn't think it's physical you should take that holiday <laughs> you'd like that wouldn't you it would do you good and leave the coast clear for you I'm sorry I said and leave the coast clear for you what are you talking about I'm talking about John you're sleeping with him aren't you I don't think that's any of your business don't you even though you're perfectly well aware that he's my love. Oh, come on, you know that's not true. Why should I lie? I'm not saying that you are lying. I know what you're doing. You're trying to take him away from oh, me. Oh, June, You're trying really? to exact some sort of perverted revenge. Do you honestly think that I would deliberately start a relationship with someone that my sister is in love with? Why not? I did. This has gone far enough. I mean it, May. I won't have you destroying my relationship with John. What relationship? There is no relationship. Your so-called love affair is just like your happy marriage. It is a figment of your imagination. What? Oh, forget it. Say so what do you mean. I know about you and William. I know that your marriage was a mistake. It was a sham. William led his own life. He got tired of you. It happens. Who told you this? John. Yes. Well, John would dearly like to believe that. It helps him square his conscience. Oh, grow up and for once in your life admit that you have made a mistake. William loved me. He always loved me from the moment we met to the moment he died. You don't believe me, do you? Very well. This was written by him two hours before he died. I have this strange feeling I'll never see you again. And I have to tell you how much I love you. How despite the ups and downs of our strangely separate lives, you were always the only one I ever cared for. No. He was so very weak, they said. But alert. No. He was always so alert. No. I didn't want to show you that. No. But you gave me no choice. No. 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 stitches in the arm, but the, uh, the shoulder's only superficial. Is she all right? She'll be fine. I'm a bit shocked. Yes. Yeah. And you say your sister did it? Hard to believe, isn't it? I told the police. 
No. No, she won't hear of it. She just ran in here. Well, she's a lucky lady. If she had sliced an artery, we'd have been in real trouble. Ah, here she is. How are we feeling now? Change your mind and come and stay at my place. She's my sister, John. She needs me. Well, you could have fooled me. She was upset. I can understand that. She needs professional help. It's something that happened in the heat of the moment. Well, at least let me come in and talk with her. Do you think that would help? No, you're probably right. God, this is bizarre. How hath no fury. Yes, I suppose so. I still don't like the idea of your staying there. I'll be fine. She's had time to calm down. Well, if there are any problems, give me a ring immediately, all right? All right. Well, thank you. Just take care. The doctor said that the cuts were relatively superficial. That's good. About this afternoon, forget it. No, I had no right to try and deprive you of any happiness. I'm sorry. It's all right. But I have had time to think. And the conclusion I've come to is that, for everyone's sake, it would be better if you moved out of the house. You said so. You'll have enough money to buy a place of your own if you want. And you're still the main beneficiary of my will. But it's not fair. I love this house. And I have my friends. Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd be moving far. I assume you and John will be looking to put things on a more permanent footing. I don't know. <laughs> I'd bet on it. He's crazy about you. So you see, you found happiness at last, May. I'm pleased for you. So that's it. You can't stay here now. You must see that. What are you doing? Protecting my investment. Where's June? On her way.
he's dead. Why? He served his purpose. But he loved you. Do you really think that I'd be able to love anyone else after William? May. There were only ever two men in my life, and you stole them both, bewitched them. First father, and then William. That's not true, me. And you're so empty-headed. You're so slight, so insubstantial. No wonder William left you. You took my whole life away from me. Well, now I'm taking it back. The house, the money, everything. Jealous woman shoots a faithless lover and then turns the gun on herself. Even the doctor can testify to that. She's going through a bad time. And those stab wounds that she inflicted on her sister. Stab wounds? The scissors. I told them both that you did it. You did it to yourself. I know. And it hurt. And I don't like inflicting unnecessary pain. May, please. Excuse me, I, I wonder if... How are you? I'd just like to say how sorry I was. Tragic thing. I have no idea. I don't want to disturb your reflections. That's all right, really. It's just that I do need to check. You will be wanting to bury your sister here, next to her husband, I take it. No, that's the last thing she wanted. June always had a horror of burial. That's odd. I was always under the impression that she wanted us to keep the space. She always said to me if anything happened to her, she wanted to be cremated. And her ashes scattered over mother and father's graves. I see. Just as well I'd check then. Wouldn't do for me, of course. I'd want to be buried here. In spite of all that's happened, I've grown to love this village. Well, I hope that won't be for a very long time. But it would be nice. Here, under the old trees. Next to William. After all, he was my brother-in-law. And there was a time when we were very close. I see the moon, the moon sees me Down through the leaves of the old oak tree Please let the light that shines on me Shine on the one I love Over the mountains, over the sea